Tracy Vo is a trailblazer in Australian media, being a first generation Vietnamese Australian who's presented news both in Sydney and here in Western Australia. She joined us for a chat with Pav on her family's journey from war-torn Vietnam to Australia and what inspires her in her daily life. Trace, thanks for joining a chat with Pav. Uh, thanks Pav. Good to be here. What a beautiful day we oh, have. Oh, stunning. Well. We put it on here in Perth, <laughs> down in Scarborough too. Yeah, it's good. And this is your local uh, hood. So what does a day look like generally for you? you? You're working in the media, you're on camera the whole time, but mm -hmm. you are a, a Scarborough local. <laughs> what do you like doing? I do love scabs, as we call it, yeah. us locals. But um, I, I'm frequent, I, I frequently swim at the Scarborough yep. pool. I love it there. Um, even through winter, I do try and get up early um, it's 27 degrees all year Ooh, round nice. so it's really beautiful in there um, and I only got it, got into it actually earlier this year because of my back so that kind of helped me out too um, so that's try and get that in and then um, basically through the week um, on the road so um, as a reporter so that's like a nine o'clock start get out there figure out what story you're on that sort of stuff but on a weekend if I'm presenting um, in there in early afternoon and just kind of um, tinkering away and seeing what's around in news as well. But um, I mean, it's so good to start the day off somewhere like here, because I feel like yeah. if I don't do it, it sort of just ruins the rest of my day, if you know what I mean. So I feel like a swim or just seeing the water or the beach, it kind of kickstarts my day in the, in the right way. It's very soothing and it's yeah. a great thing to do for the soul. What, whatever exercise that is, that's something that I've learned actually being retired yeah, for five years now. <laughs> um, whether it's a run or a walk or you're yeah, jumping in the ocean, it's mm. a great way to start the day. What do you love the most about your job? Because you do have a, a bit of variety. You are out in the road doing um, normal reporting, yeah. for want of a better term, and then you are presenting yeah. and reading the news. What do you, when do you love the, the job the most? Yeah, I, um, oh God, <laughs> I enjoy it all. Like I think it's, I think it's a privilege to do what we do um, in terms of sharing the stories and providing the information. I think we have a big responsibility in news to deliver the right um, the facts, yeah. um, but also, you know, stories that occur not just here, but around the country and around the world. And I think that's a really important task that we have to deliver to the viewers every night. I really love presenting. I love the live element of it. Um, and, you know, having the banter with like yourself or Patty Sweeney, um, or like Tomo or, or Monica as well. And of course, Sherry and Liz, our weather presenters. I think that's, I think it's, it just shows what, t what kind of team we are. Yeah. And also, I mean, you know what I'm like. I, I love to have a laugh and I like to show my personality so um, I think I love the live element of it all but I think again I think it's a privilege to do what we do and um, make sure that we deliver the right news to the viewers every single night it's such a big responsibility and um, yeah as I said it's a privilege. What was your journey into the media life because uh, and we'll get to your family as <laughs> yeah. well but um, you know was it uni was it here in Perth what was your journey into the role you have right now. Yeah. Well, the reason why I chose media was because I was terrible at maths and science <laughs> in high school. I was shocking. Not like yourself, you no, know. No, you I wasn't much you, good oh either. God, you did science and everything. I thought, you know, I'm good with words. Um, and I did. We did a bit of media studies through high school too. So from yep. like 15, um, I kind of knew that I wanted to be a journalist. But it was interesting because I read the paper every day, and I'd see the byline, and some of the journalists would there would be a Vietnamese surname. So that kind of inspired me. Um, to kind of um, pursue that yeah. and then so I went through uni at Curtin, um, spent a lot of time at Curtin FM, still around which is great, <laughs> um, the great oldie station yeah. so reading the news, um, being on the road as well so that was great and then I got my first job um, in Sydney actually mm -hmm. so um, working for Radio 2 SM, it's like one of the biggest networks, but they cover lots of regional New South Wales. Great sort of training base for, for people at straight out of uni. Because yeah. you can kind of make your mistakes, you can learn from them, but not be sort of, I guess, um, criticised too much too from exposed. the listeners. I know yeah, you're not yeah, exposed yeah. that much, you know, because um, people can be cruel. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then my first TV gig was Sky News. So okay. I. It was, you know, it was great. I, I got my job um, there as a presenter, reporter, and presenting. So it was really great to kind of just get all those skills there. And that was kind of just when the 24-hour news thing was starting uh, up. Yeah. It was really early days. Um, and then, luckily for me, the boss there was actually poached to go to Channel Nine to take over the newsroom there. And he asked me, he was like, "Do you want to come with me?" I went, "Well, that's a pretty good opportunity." Yeah. And I've always kind of, I've always watched Channel Nine. 
mum and dad, we'd always have Channel 9, and, like Sunday night, 60 yep. Minutes. We'd watch the Sunday program with Laurie and his interviews, um, you know, all that sort of, and you know, Got when it. it was National 9 News back then. Yes. So I've been with 9 since 2007. Yeah, Sydney and now in Perth, yeah. And, um, and your mum and dad, you touched on the Vietnamese yes. element, Vogue, but, <laughs> but um, their story to here in Australia is quite unique and quite mm. remarkable, really. Um, talk, talk us through how they got here and, and their journey. Yeah, so they're Vietnamese refugees. Um, they suck it through the war, um, which, you know, the fall of Saigon was 75. Um, hung around for a few more years, but it was just a, a really tough life there, you know. Um, they just couldn't earn an income, they had to work on the black market, so they took the risk to um, escape by boat and um, made it to Malaysia. Um, Australia accepted them straight away, which was great, so yeah. a couple of weeks later they were able to fly into Perth. They had no idea where Perth was, they heard of city in Melbourne, um, but that was 1978, wow. um, in the middle of the year, so it was winter. Dad had a t-shirt and shorts on, so he was freezing. <laughs> but they have never looked back since. Um, this is their home. Like they, they, mum still says it's paradise for them yeah. every single day. Um, they kind of considered perhaps maybe moving over to Melbourne, but Perth is Perth. They love Perth too much, so they've been in that northern suburbs for four, over 40 years now, and they haven't moved, and they still love it there. So yeah. So lots to, to sort of pick apart there, but maybe the first point is, how has it affected you and your upbringing and, and maybe your tenacity or the way you approach things? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I just watched them as a kid, like they worked really hard, they had to build everything from scratch, yeah. you know. Um, Dad, I guess, had to learn new skills. He was um, always great in the kitchen, but didn't really sort of see it as a, as a, as a, um, a career. Um, but he's been a chef, he was a chef from the early days, they were, they were working in the uh, migrant hostel in the kitchen. Um, mum was a great baker, so she started learning how to make wedding, wedding cakes and birthday cakes. So they made that that their um, their career. So they had a catering business for a long time. So I watched how hard they worked, um, days, nights, long yeah. hours. And I think for them, it was, I guess it's an obligation for me to kind of give back to them and, and make sure that I pursued a career that I not just enjoyed, but also, um, could sort of give back to them as well, but also build a, a good future for my future family as well, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So um, I think that's why, I mean, media is hard, as you know, and yeah. it's, it's, it is a tough gig, it's not easy. Um, and I always describe it as a marathon, not a sprint, like you can't rush yourself through media. So I think that's probably given me a lot of resilience to kind of stick it through, um, through some tough moments through my career. Um, it's just because of mum and dad and just seeing how hard they worked. Um. When you're reporting on stories about refugees, when yep. you're reporting on stories about world events in, in different locations, it's obviously close to your heart mm -hmm. with what your mum and dad experienced. How can you separate the two? Um, I can, but it was interesting actually, just so quite timely, just what, seeing those images from Afghanistan. Mm. And even I was speaking to my mum, she's like, oh, it's Saigon again, you know, people crawling up the planes. Like it was the same thing with the helicopters yeah. in 75. And it's just so weird that it's history repeating itself in 2021. Um, those, I think as it's, people ask me about whether news affects me. I think as I get older, it does. Like those stories, stories affects me, affect me, family, kids, anything to do with kids. They kind of um, rattle me a little bit. So yeah. I think as you get older, <laughs> I think maybe the empathy builds up a lot more. I think when you're young, you just kind of like you're a bit gung-ho and you just want to get out there but um, I, I mean I do try and separate the two because we are in news but I, I don't think it's a bad thing to also relate to it and also empathize and, and have some compassion there too and so those stories that you talk about you're out there daily mm. uh, looking at them whether they're world events or, or here in Perth um, how do, again how do you um, not get <laughs> caught up too much because you do need to report the news <laughs> yeah. but at the same time yeah. there's that real personal empathy yeah. aspect to it um i think you kind of if, if you enter media you kind of built in a way that you can sort of put it in a box for a moment um do the job that you need to do but i, I think I, over the years i've just learned to go okay well i don't want to just keep it in a box i probably need to reflect on it a little bit and see okay um keep that empathetic and keep that compassionate side like my dad is a very a big believer of that like mm. don't lose that side of you um so i do tend to kind of go home and reflect on some stories that 
that are quite um, can be traumatic or quite heartwarming, you know, either yeah. side. Um, and I think that's important as well. I don't think you should keep it in a box for too long. You're breaking a few barriers. Oh. Female, <laughs> Vietnamese. <Gosh. laughs> like, it, it, is that something that you recognise? How that you know people would be looking up to you about? Well, there's Tracy Bo. Um, you know reading the news that, that that's you're a bit of a trail break, <laughs> oh I don't know about that but um, I mean I hope so I think it's, it's nice when I get to see like, you know I've done some talks with, with you know schools and um, it's nice to know when I've got girls who are similar background to me Vietnamese Australian or Chinese you know Chinese or ethnic in, in, in any way yep. um, shape or form their first generation Australians and it's nice to hear when they say like oh you know it's so great to watch you on TV, you like us, or, you know, I want to be on the news now, or I want to pursue a career in media, and it's really nice to be able to hear that from them. Um, I think there's still a long way to go. I think there's a lot more barriers to um, break down, um, and I think it's great that that conversation is being had um, in, at this time. But, um, I mean, I hope I can do more. Don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I hope I can do more to break down those barriers and just make people feel more included. Like, we shouldn't feel like as if you know I don't see myself as like too different which is good because but that's a testament to who I work with management as well um, but it's nice to know that you know I'm welcomed into people's homes every night so. <laughs> and we welcome you dearly <laughs> now the media the perception at least can be that it's male dominated yeah. chauvinistic kind of ruthless has that been your experience um, yeah, I think early on you have to be quite ruthless. Um, it's tough to, to get through. And uh, it, but when I started, um, I was it was a very old school newsroom in, in Sydney. Um, I was one of the few. Probably, it was only one or one or one of two young females on the production wow. desk um, on the six o'clock production desk. And it was a bit tough. It was tough to kind of have a voice. Mm. Um, I was. I mean, I was quite naturally shy because it was such a big newsroom. You had some big personalities, so it was hard for me to speak. Um, fast forward to now, I think we're getting better. Um, the perception, it's interesting you use that word perception because I think there is this, still the perception of a bit of a boys club mm. and you know, the men make all of the decisions and um, I think there's still a long way to go for females to have a voice. But our newsroom's great. We've got amazing, strong women yeah. <laughs> everywhere, really. I think we run we run the newsroom. Yeah, well, 100 percent. Like I, you walk in, and there's just women everywhere. Which, um, coming from a, a sporting background, yes. which was a very blokey background, a locker room, mm -hmm. um, it's been actually very refreshing. Yeah, I must say, and good. it's awesome to see that you got strong women with strong personal, uh, personalities and mm. opinions. But everyone, at the end of the day, understands that we're all united and we have to produce yes. something every single night. Yes. And it comes together, yeah. it seems, and maybe not always yeah. seamlessly, but, but pretty well. Yeah, I think people have asked me that question a lot, especially in recent months, and I feel like sometimes, you know, there's a perception for females to be emotional and we, you know, we might um, give opinions off that because it's, uh, we're coming from feelings, um, it's, it's feelings based. But I think it's, I think it's really good to have our opinions there because we give mm. a different perspective to what used to happen back in the day when it was male dominated in my opinion that's my personal opinion um still a long, long way to go but mm. i'm really it's so nice to see where nine is tracking as well like again like we've got um a deputy news director and an ex ex executive producer who's female and across like actually across all the bulletins really so it's it's fantastic to see more females than males. <laughs> I know. Are you a bit scared when you walk in sometimes? I'm not scared. Um, no, I, I'm not scared. But it, it, again, it's just a different environment totally. that I, um, I guess, was. But we're part always of for a long learning, time. which is the, the it, which is the big thing. And yeah. And I guess I mean, I, without going into too much detail, I did a, um, a part of my uni. I did a study around not-for-profit sector uh, and more women and why do they get further than the, the corporate level. And speaking of, to females about all the, the different experiences they have, why they are successful, why they're not, it opened my eyes to things that I had no idea about, you know, that unconscious bias piece that yeah. I guess everyone's used to. But I think our newsroom, you're right, is, is trending yeah. and, and certainly heading in the right direction. Mm. Growing up here in Perth, though, um, sport was a big part of your life. <laughs> Um, Thanks to my brother Trevor. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? Was it was it cricket? Was it football? Was it uh, other type of sports? What did you love doing? Oh, I mean, I'll, no, I wasn't. Trevor got the athleticism. I was <laughs> I was a spectator. Okay. So okay. Um, I in I mean, well, growing up, we backyard cricket, yeah. rode our bikes around. Trevor um, 
talented basketballer back in the day, so we obviously had a basketball ring in the backyard too. Yeah. Um, watch the footy day in, day out. That's I, I love watching sport. I think people find it quite surprising when I... I mean I, I mean, I love coming around having conversations yeah. with you guys in the sports department. I, I do have a real genuine interest in sport. I think it's just, I think it's kind of the way of life here in Australia. Yeah. Like, even we were talking with, my, I was talking to my dad the other day and, you know, discussing like, who was, he, who was he following in terms of the soccer, so the round ball. And um, like my partner asked us, like, you know, what do you prefer, AFL or, or, or the round ball? He's like, no, AFL now, because, you know, he's, he's like, we're here. Like, I, yeah. I follow the AFL more. So we're a real sporting family. Um, and I watch everything. Like I just love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to avoid here in, in well, Australia. Well, it's true. Isn't it? It's true. But I mean, I as a female, I think it's you know I, I'm I'm glad I have that sort of genuine interest and, and knowledge as well. <laughs> I, I grew up around you know my mum and my sister were heavily into their sport. Yeah, and, great. You know, Lauren loves it. So yeah. yeah, I've always had a strong female influence in in sport. Mm. Um, and I think speaking of influence, I've had an influence over your mum. <laughs> Is this true? <laughs> That's true. Well, the Bows were always West Coast, a West Coast family. And the other night, we were all at dinner and um, she was asked, oh, no, like, it, yeah, that was the topic of conversation. And Mum's like, no, 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 I'm Dockers now. And I was like, what? I was like, Mum, you've never spoken about the Dockers, or like, free, nothing. And she's like, I was like, why? She goes, I like Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then she just, that's all she said. And she just continued on, continued on with her dinner. She just, it was very smug. And I went, okay, mum. So I think she was quite proud of that. Hello so you have had, had, yeah. had a huge influence <laughs> on my mum. I'm glad. Someone. I'm glad. <laughs> That's all appealing to these yeah, days. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing all right. You're doing all right. Um, what, what's what's next for Tracy Bow? I mean, oh, you know, you've been in the media for a long time. <clears throat> um, the pinnacle, probably, in some degree, is to, and, and maybe this is the wrong assumption, but to read the news, to present. Yes. Um, you know, is it about being a foreign correspondent? Yeah. Is it about doing something different? Well, yeah. what do you? Um, I think it's personal preference. Like, I kind of never really. I think just in terms of personal life, I just didn't really want to go too far away from my family. So mm. foreign correspondent was um, not really sort of on my radar. I got to travel a lot though for work, which yeah. is, you know, overseas, locally, over east. So I think I've kind of sort of scratched that itch. Um, I love presenting. I love, again, I think I was saying to you, I love the live element of everything. What's next, I don't know. I feel, I'm going to say it, Pav, I feel so lucky. I really ticked off everything that I wanted to do. Career-wise, I think everything that comes along now is a bonus yeah. for me. Um, yeah, I, I just hope that I can kind of just be in that newsroom for as long as possible while I can yeah. um, and, and, and deliver the news to our viewers. And I guess just um, connecting with them as well. And, and I like the fact when I can see that, like I'm walking around and people say TiVo rather than Trey. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's really, that's great. heartwarming for me. I feel um, as if they know me personally, which is really nice. So. I, honestly, anything that comes along now is a bonus for me, and I just I'm, I'm so grateful to have have this career. After I, I've worked bloody hard for it too, but well, I, I'm very grateful. And I, I can see that tenacity and that resilience, and it's obviously come through from your parents, and, and it's been a real um, pathway for you in terms of your career. A question though, when when you are walking around Perth, because yeah. this happens a little bit, is that yeah. someone will come up and start saying, "Oh, hi, Tracy," yeah, yeah, yeah. and they kind of forget that. You don't know yeah. who they are. Has that happened? <laughs> yeah, yes. I'm like, oh, okay, hi. So you've got to be so polite, obviously. Gosh, you would know, Pav. And then um, I'll be like, I'll, I'll have a bit of a conversation. And then some people who I have met, but I just, you know, we meet so many people um, when we're yes. out and about. So I just politely go, when did I see you last? And then that will be a trigger. Or there's just other people who, after a little while, I'm like, hey, g'day, you know, and then you figure, oh, they're just a, like, a lovely viewer who wants to say hi. So, no, I've had that a lot. You always have to be polite because <laughs> you don't want you don't want to anger any um, any viewers or any fans out there. So. so you get feedback. I mean, I get feedback all the time, whether it was from my playing career or now mm. in the media. Oh yeah, of course you do. Do you get do you get um, <laughs> mainly good feedback, or does um, anyone come so. up and said oh, you got to work on this? 
I've never, the only, and it was a really like light-hearted comment, but I had some lovely older ladies, they were just having a coffee just up the road and I walked past and we said g'day and she's like, I don't like how everyone says Tomo and Tivo and Powers and I, I look, and I said, I understand that that's great feedback, but that's who we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, the reason why we do say these things to each other is because we want you also to feel like as if you're connected to us and you know us personally. And I think hopefully that kind of changed her mind a little bit. That's the that's the only kind okay. of you know criticism I've, I've received. Oh, you're yeah. nailing yeah, it. Yeah, well, I, know. I, hope so. I get a, I get a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're uh, sort of going back to your family because mm. and, and last year with COVID because mm. um, you were in Sydney. You oh, yes, were working yes. with Carl. You were yes. working on the Today Show. Yeah. You were doing um, you know lots of interesting stuff there. And then COVID hit. Mm family was close you know talk us through that challenging time because you were you know what would appear um, living a great life yeah. and lifestyle over there in Sydney yeah so I had lived in Sydney for like nine years almost ten years before that and then I came back and then I got the opportunity to work on today's show with Carl Lally Alex great team it was it was so much fun yeah like I besides do, the I, early mornings besides the early mornings <laughs> I'm, I'm not too bad with okay. the early mornings I don't okay. mind it yeah because it, it's just fun yeah. that's why I didn't mind the early mornings and they're a great, great team, and I do miss them dearly, and I do miss that that role because of that live element too. But um, we, it was weird when COVID started hitting because we we were reporting on it every morning, and we're like, and then I could like Carl was next to me, he'd be like, I don't know, hey, this isn't looking good, yeah. like, and we just sort of got more reports coming through, especially out of China, and it was quite stressful. Like I had flown back to check on Dad, um, and then I I got a tip off that borders were going to close pretty much so I came back on the Saturday yep and I heard that they were going to close on the Tuesday because South Australia was going to move ah. so once South Australia did then we were going to so then <clears throat> excuse me and then I just thought you know what I need, I need to bite the bullet and just do it so and um, it for family and for your dad I, abso yeah. absolutely yeah. and I thought well I just didn't we just didn't know what was going to happen yeah. didn't know if I could come back um, it, it was just a really sort of it was just and it was really weird over there as well like I was living in Manly and the whole strip there was just empty yeah. it was just odd so I thought well I'm here on my own I should really get back to the family and make sure they're okay and we're just all in one state at least so literally flew back to Sydney packed up my things came back Monday yeah that Monday a good decision because there probably yeah. hasn't been many other places in the world well, look <laughs> that you'd want to be now. We, I mean you know we're, we're so lucky here yeah. we, we have had so many and hopefully just we can stay this way but we've been mm. so free and we've got such a beautiful day today and we're out and about there's no restrictions so um and we yeah. get to maybe have some footy finals here. Are you going to go it, along to the... Oh, I, I, I would like to if I could have that day. <laughs> um, it's so exciting. I think it's a really great um, coup for us, yeah. I suppose, in WA. I mean, you must be super excited. It's just yeah. nice. I don't, I don't know when we'd ever have the grand final here ever again. So No, uh, stopping short of, um, you know, undoing that um, contract that the AFL have done with the mm. Victorian government, which mm. I'm an advocate for. Yeah. Um, that's not going to happen no, anytime exactly, soon. So, yes, exactly, you're right. Yeah. It's, it's probably a yeah, once in a lifetime yeah. opportunity. Um, well, Trace, I've, you are a trailblazer. Oh, God, thank you're you. someone who's, <laughs> I, I mean this, got great resilience and tenacity. You can see it's come through from your parents and, and their journey here to Australia. Um, it's looking almost too good out there <laughs> to not have a swim. So I know. <laughs> maybe we'll, we'll, we'll wind it up there and say yep. thank you very much for thanks, having Pat. a chat. No, thanks so much. Thanks, Trace. <laughs>